Hey, Paul, welcome to the show. As a way of getting started, tell us about yourself. Hey, Brian, thanks for having me on, man. Um, I am a Los Angeles-based sales rep, uh, and when I'm not working to sell data storage systems, <laughs> spend, <laughs> I spend a lot of time with my wife and our two young daughters, and when I'm not working or doing family stuff, um, I love solving puzzles, reading books, going for runs and exercising down at the beach, um, just getting a lot of fresh air wherever I can find it. Well, you live in the right place, don't you? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> How'd you get into sales? Oh, my, um, my path with sales has, has been a, an interesting one and definitely a fun one. I, I came out of college um, having majored in, in Spanish and minored in business and not just to be honest with you, not really knowing what I wanted to do. But I always knew that I had a love for communication and kind of understanding what, pe what makes people tick. Um, that was a big reason I majored in Spanish. I wanted to be able to travel. I wanted to be able to go study abroad and, and meet people and really like have um, a deeper understanding of, of what they were after and, and how to be um, in touch and present with them. Uh, that led to a lot of travel. Um, and when I, when I got back, I got a job at a construction parts company where they had me doing all types of stuff. I was driving a forklift in the warehouse. I was going to job sites to deliver um, our products, which was a patented paver pedestal system, if you have any concept of what that is. Um, and then also sales and marketing back at the home office. And out of all those things, there were pros and cons to each. But what really turned me on the most was when a contractor would call in and we would get into what does your project look like? what needs to happen to get the project across the line? How do you win the project? And then how in turn does my company win the project to sell our pedestal pavers to you? So I discovered that was kind of like the, the main thing that I like doing there. Uh, that led me to a job where I um, did cold calling, door-to-door -door walking sales of UPS shipping contracts for about a year. Um, I learned a lot about how to take no and how to take rejection. And I, I still love sales, but I just thought for the amount of effort that I'm putting in here, there's got to be yeah, a smarter way, <laughs> a di you know, a different effort to reward ratio that I can recognize. And that's when a buddy of mine um, introduced me to his team at a uh, data storage company where I used to live up in Seattle. Um, and basically, as soon as I walked in for my first interview, I said, this looks like it. This looks like a place I could I could really be successful and uh, make some great relationships and ultimately like establish more of a career than, than what I've been doing up to that time. Yeah. And what was it like transitioning from selling shipping services and construction stuff to selling like IT stuff? Well, it, it was a lot of learning, right? I didn't know about a NAS, about a SAN, about ethernet, about fiber. I didn't know any of that. So yeah. it was a lot of studying up front. But I found that the, the skills I developed on the construction part side, on the shipping contract side, they all carried over. I knew how to talk to people. I knew how to um, understand what they were going through. And that was the part that I enjoyed the most. So um, basically, once I kind of got my feet under me with, with some knowledge about our product and the competitive landscape in which we played, uh, I was able to translate to some success really early on. I, I definitely missed being out and like going to talk to, you know, the owner of the company and try and sell him a shipping contract versus, you know, sitting in a desk all day, making 50, 100, 120 phone calls and, uh, and talking to IT managers and, you know, a, a different, um, a different sort of audience. Um, but I was able, like I said, to, uh, to book some meetings, uh, even on my first day of smiling and dialing. And uh, I haven't really looked back since then. And where's this curiosity come from? I mean, it sounds like that's the type of person you are, where you're, you're curious about others, how the world works, mm -hmm. seeing things through other people's eyes. Uh, good question. I, I think some of it is I've always liked to be put in a new situation where you got to adapt rapidly. You got to think on your feet. Uh, maybe, you know, maybe a little bit of BS is involved. But you're MacGyver. definitely, yeah. <laughs> yeah, MacGyver. That's a that's a PC way to put it. Um, but you know, you gotta you gotta land and and start sw or start swimming right away. Um, when when I was young, my family moved across the country from the East Coast out to Seattle, 
and I was, you know, in middle school and dying, right. like finding a new group of friends yeah. right off the bat. And I, I thought that as challenging as it was in the first couple of weeks, it, it kind of taught me a lot about how to go and like interact with people and figure out, are we matching right now? Or is this something that's not going to make sense for like a friendship or, you know, homework buddies or, or whatever it was that I was looking for back then. And, you know, cause a lot of people do either that or they hide in their shell. Yeah. You know, and yeah. was there a particular catalyst for that? Or is that the way you are? I think that, I think that that's just kind of the way I am. I, um, I grew up also playing sports and okay. hiding in your shell in sports is not really an option, right? You right. got to go out and, and <laughs> <laughs> you're just going to sit on the bench if that's, if that's yeah. the case. Um, so no, I really enjoyed uh, pushing myself and I didn't, I wasn't going to be satisfied with just knowing like the one other, um, you know, the one other kid who was going to sit in his shell as well. Right. And did you play team sports or individual sports? Yeah, mostly team sports. Uh, yeah. Lacrosse was lacrosse was my oh, big yeah. one, and I learned a lot in in lacrosse. Um, I was fortunate enough to play all through college, and you really get to you really get a sense of like how you fit into the world in that microcosm of the team. Um, I, you know, speaking of like adapting. Um, about halfway through high school, my coach asked me to switch from an offensive attackman position to playing goalie. I don't really have any experience, but I thought, well, I get to play the entire game. If, yeah. I'm, if I'm a good goalie, I'll play the entire game. And if I'm a good leader as a goalie, I'll be able to put my defenders in front of me in places where I would rarely see a shot that I couldn't save. Yeah. So I thought it, it gave me a lot of uh, openings to kind of explore leadership, even in high school and college. And um, on top of that, I, you know, looking back on it now as a sales guy, you can kind of like put anything into the right lens. Um, but looking back on it now, it also taught me a lot about resetting quickly, right? La lacrosse is a high scoring game. And as a goalie, you're not expecting to shut the other team out. So you can never get too, too high after you make a save and you can never get too low after you get scored on. Cause you're going to have to turn around and look in the ball, look in the goal and break that ball out. <laughs> and it's people are counting on you, you know, cause it's very much the center of attention at that, that point, that moment in the game. Oh yeah, for sure. There's, I mean, maybe less than a second of the ball being in the air flying right at you and you got to figure out how you're going to respond. Yeah. And why did you decide to leave, you know, a big, probably a secure company, you know, to, to go to a smaller company? Yeah. Um, I mean, to be, to be totally honest with you, there were two main reasons. I was, I was covering some of the largest um, enterprise accounts that, that we sold to at my prior company. And I was, I was kind of in, in a tension between what my company was willing to offer in terms of, uh, you know, R and D and, uh, delivering new feature sets to the customers that, that I sold to, yeah. um, and my customers who were pushing me to get that done on their behalf. Um, I was, as you can imagine, the, uh, the responsibility and kind of like the, um, the target on your back grows, but sometimes you're not, you don't get the feeling that you're given the tools to, um, to address that properly. And so that was a big one. And then the, the other thing that I wanted was the opportunity to build something new. And so when I joined uh, my current company, which, uh, yeah, it's, it's a smaller, you know, we're a smaller shop, we're, we're a growing team. Um, I think we had something along the lines of like 30 to 40 customers. Wow. And over the past few years, you know, we've tripled, quadrupled that count. And um, I was the first sales guy hired there. So I, I've really gotten to enjoy the process of, um, of building a business. And, and it's something that I wanted to like develop that capability in my career, because whether you're at a big company or at a small company, if you get hired to do a sales job or a revenue attracting job, you're on the hook to build something. And did you know somebody already there? Yeah, I I'd worked previously with a couple of guys who um, who had gone over to my current company, and uh, you know, all credit to those guys because because they're incredible. <laughs> but when I got there, I was like, 
I'm not sure this is exactly what we talked about, guys. <laughs> You look it through was, your uh, notes. Yeah. 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 It was, um, I think at that time there was about, I think I was number 13 on the team, wow. lucky 13. And, um, you know, as the first sales guy I hired, there, there's a lot of, um, of creation that has to yes. be done, creating relationships, creating sales collateral, creating um, presentations and yeah, the process for sure. And, um, I'm super proud of what we've built. It's been an awesome ride. And, uh, the, we've done a lot of cool stuff just this year that I think is going to impact our, our trajectory in the, in the right direction. And how about as far as, you know, you, you're the first sales rep in there. Expectations are probably pretty high, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, you're, what do they say? Pioneer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Had, somebody had to go uh, plant the flag. You know what I mean? <laughs> somebody um, gets all the arrows. Yeah. I, you know, I was lucky. I came into a place where we had a couple um, partner right. relationships that were forming, that were developing. Yeah. Um, and so I was able to w figure out ways to align myself with the partners and work that direction. Um, and then because of the, um, like I said, because of the 30 to 40 customers we had at the time, there was a little bit of track record, right? Those, those deals had been sold by the CEO and the CTO going and calling on a lot of their friends on a lot of their previous yeah, um, network you know, contacts and yeah, network. Um, but those folks were willing to help us with references. And as every sales person knows, the, the reference goes a long, long way in terms of developing a conversation. And what's it like now? Cause it's almost five years. Yeah. Coming up on the five year anniversary. It's, it's crazy how time flies and, uh, like I said, it, it's amazing. You know, we've been through a couple of product iterations, each one better than the last. Um, we've been in uh, very competitive cycles and, and won deals that you, you know, you never would expect to win going into it, frankly. We're going against um, 50, $100 billion companies and yeah. <laughs> little old <laughs> us winning the deal. Are you kidding me? Um, so we've seen a lot of, we've seen a lot of great successes. We've seen a lot of progress in terms of what we're able to deliver to support our customers. And, and that's the most, um, that's probably the most rewarding thing is just seeing the success of, of the customers where, where you feel, you know, what we do is we support media and entertainment workflows, right? Okay. So anything from, uh, an ad that you see on a video ad that you see playing on your phone to uh, you know hundreds of millions of dollars feature film from a mate from a major studio, um, and while we're not directly helping to create that content, there's really smart and creative people who are doing the editing, doing the visual effects, writing the storylines. There's actors you know delivering their lines, and um, there's all these amazing people ahead of us in the process, but we are some little part in that chain. And it feels really incredible to be associated with some of those projects. Well, that's it. Because I was thinking, you know, because I've never really seen that many salespeople located in LA, which is kind of weird because I mean, from a population standpoint, I think it's what the number two largest city in mm -hmm. the country. You'd be surprised how many salespeople there are down here. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's not a, uh, it's not a suffering population by no. stretch. And, and especially in technology, right? Our, our, um, our product here in yeah. LA, a lot of which is media and entertainment, but we also have finance. We also have biotech. We also have um, law, insurance, all different types of uh, organizations, automobile factories, for sure. We got Tesla, Toyota, Hyundai, all these places. Yeah, um, yeah there's no shortage of sales guys and, and opportunities to find. And, and how do you win these deals when you're competing against uh, Goliath? Yeah, so I think a lot of it um, comes down to first spending your time in the right place and, yeah, and second focus. finding, yeah, focus for sure. And then finding a good fit, not only between me and the prospect, but between my company and their company. Okay. How, do I, how do I create an environment where um, I understand, you know, there's a couple of things, there's a couple of layers to it, right? But I got to understand what makes your company successful. And then I got to understand how my product can benefit that success. How, how is our um, success going to be tied together? And how can I view my own success through your lens? And are you selling to IT? Are you selling to the user? Yeah, so we, we kind of think of ourselves as addressing, uh, you know, the triangle between um, the IT administrator, yeah. 
yeah. the creative end user, and then of course, like the financial or the, the business decision maker. Um, I would say the the most important person in that triangle is the creative because that's everybody's yeah. customer. Yeah. The, the IT and the business buyer are in service of that creative person and then we are at their service. So if we can find our way into like the, uh, the VP of post-production, something like that, that's an amazing place for us to start. But on the other hand, the CTO knows about the problems that the creatives have because they're banging on his door all day long. And so if we have a conversation or we're able to develop a relationship with a CTO or a VP of IT, that's also a, a really positive sort of lane to play in. And then you have to justify it to the finance people. Is that Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. You you always have the you always have the fact that at some point somebody's gonna ask, well, why does this cost what More. it costs. Yeah. yeah you well, we already have spend. something. Yeah. 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 You've had something for the past three to five years. Why not go seven to 10? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, we, we do have the, we do have to sort of say, look, in terms of return, we're going to point to uh, what we call a return on performance okay. and performance can be measured in a lot of ways. So we have flexibility there. We can say, you know, just ones and zeros, kind of speeds and feeds, we're going to make you guys way faster. But what if uh, performance also meant you were more efficient in getting your creative work delivered on time and on budget? That's a huge win for any studio, for any sort of content creation shop. Um, we are also extremely price competitive. Um, but we basically what we try and do is create instead of an ROI, an ROP, and we, we can measure performance in, you know, a dozen different ways and focusing on the way that they view it right yeah for sure which, yeah. which of which of these um performance metrics is most relevant to you, to you. Yeah. and it's all about determining you know you know you want to find a lot of uh, alignment you want to find a match between you and your prospect whoever you're meeting with and if if you ask good questions and you truly listen to the answers they'll tell you which of those metrics matters to them. And what has made you so successful at sales? What, you, what distinctions do you see between what you've done and people who haven't been successful or not as successful? Um, I, I love to compete first and foremost. I think that, you know, um, there's a, there's a big part of me that, like w once I'm in the, you know, once I'm in the game, like I'm not letting go and I'm going to figure out a way to score my points and, and to win. That's a huge thing that I love to do. Uh, like I said, figuring out other people and what makes them tick is also a huge driver for me. And then um, uh, finally, I would say listening. I, I think it's so critical to just zip it and let your customer talk. If you think you're gonna hear what return on performance metrics or any, you know, what, if you think you're gonna hear what matters to your customer while you're talking, you're wrong. It's just not gonna come while you're talking. So yeah. I think the best way, you know, and this is, this is simple stuff, but you know, you ask those open ended questions, um, you offer a little information and then you expect to receive some in, in, and let that guide you for the next phase of the conversation. I mean, because you've gone from two very deep areas. I mean, data storage, super deep, mm -hmm. you know, very acronym oriented. <laughs> yeah. Right. All the three letter terms you could guess. Yeah. Speeds and feeds. And then mm -hmm. into media, which is more artistic, but yet still super deep. Mm hmm. You know, because mm -hmm. everybody cares about certain things and the technology is moving insanely fast. Yeah, it's it's been such a fun ride for those reasons. Like, you know, 10 years ago, starting at my first day at a big time data storage company, um, it, it was overwhelming all the all this all the material that I knew I was going to have to study. Not only not only the stuff that I was going to have to learn about the industry and the competition, but um, the, the presentations, like what was I going to have to know how to say in front of a customer? What, what was, what kind of live fire questions was I going to receive and be on the hook to answer? Um, and then to, yeah, like you said, kind of go from that pool into the deeper and more specific pool or niche of media and entertainment technology. Um, it's, it's been such a fun learning experience. And um, I, I'm really, I feel fortunate that 
the lessons I'm learning here in this sort of corner of the universe uh, would be applicable anywhere. It, it is because people take, you know, kind of one end of the spectrum is they they get scared and they're apologizing for not knowing stuff mm -hmm. to the other end where you're curious and interested in their perspective of it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because you're never going to know as much as about it as they do. So, so oh, you, yeah. can't, you can't even try. Yeah. I, I think it never hurts to ask a question and, you know, to say, honestly, I don't, I don't know that, or I've never heard that. I don't understand that. Can yeah. you fill me in? Yeah. And what other things have you developed? I mean, because clearly they pulled you in with, you know, a, a reasonable amount of sales experience, but not like a VP level, you know, mm -hmm. like a 10, 15 years. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> So they must have had some confidence or saw something in you. Yeah, I had had, uh, I'd had a couple of really successful years at my previous company. And um, I, I felt like it was the time to, to make a move that would really set my career on a different trajectory. And that, that starting at a smaller place where I could really put, put my stamp on the, the progress that we made was going to be great. Um, you know, working at a big company, um, it's really different. You have a ton of support and you have yeah. a ton, you know, as a salesperson, you're running a, a little tiny business with inside of a big, big business. Um, and so, for example, if you had a, a down quarter, if you had a bad month, there was going to be one of a hundred other sales people there who had, you know, who outweighed your bad month, right. Who kind of like fill, picked up the slack. Um, and when, when you work for a small company, every win, every loss, just, really means a lot more. The blood, sweat, and tears that go into every engagement and, and the preparation that we do because of how much each you know, conversation matters to us, uh, it's high stakes, man. It's, it's really fun for that reason. And you know, tying it back to playing goalie and lacrosse, like I can't imagine um, uh, kind of taking my foot off the gas when, when there's so much to go after and when there's so much pressure and when, you know, the, the activities that I'm pursuing on a day to day, on a week to week basis are, you know, keeping the company running and supporting the team around me. Now, because that goal, the goalie mindset versus like the, I don't know what they call them in uh, lacrosse, but like the forwards. Yeah. Like an attackman. Okay. Because the attackman clearly the desire to win. Mm -hmm. Goalie seems more like the, the fear, not fear, but the preservation of not losing. Yeah, sure. I, I don't know, to be honest with you, I've heard, I've heard you ask other, other folks this question on the show, uh, but I, I'd be torn. I, I think I would just say like 51% hate <laughs> losing, 49% love winning, you know, yeah. maybe even like 50.5 and 49.5. I, um, I'm that guy who would, you know, if you beat me in ping pong, I demand another game a thousand times until I got, until I got a win. <laughs> <laughs> and, and is it because you feel like you're leaving, letting the team down or is it personal? Oh, it's not, it's not personal. I just, um, I just want to, I just want to get the victory. You know, the, the feeling of, you know, knowing that you accomplished it is, is what it all boils down to. And I think people in sales have to have that caring. Mm -hmm. Instead of that shrugging it off and moving on, mm -hmm. because if, if you're not emotionally connected to it, you're mm -hmm. not going to go the extra mile. Yeah, for sure. And I think that, I think that resonates with people, honestly. I, I think that one of the, the tools that, that I've developed over the past few years working for a smaller company is the ability to translate our culture and our values to a prospect. Um, you know, in a sales call, which sounds kind of strange, I think, but I think if we can find that we have a match or an alignment in terms of my values and my company's values and your values and your company's values, we're really, you know, making a lot of progress in that conversation. And that's part of building a team because a, mm -hmm. a team is aligned on values. Yeah, for sure. Not and if you're doing it, if you're doing it really, really well, you know, I've got my team, the, you know, the systems engineers that I work with and the developers who are actually like putting their, their efforts into making our products better. We've got a team at my company, but if I'm doing my best work, 
the customer is on my team as well, right? He he's thinking, I see what I see what Paul can bring to the table. I see what Paul's solutions can bring to the table, and I'm going to look good if this all goes the way that we both know it can. No, oh. and the the teamwork thing must have really came in handy at the startup. Because... Oh, you have to, yeah. You have <laughs> because to... you you could be the lone wolf kind of at a, a big company. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But as well, yeah, I mean, I mean, nobody, look, everybody's, everybody's here, right? You, you've got the team that you're going to battle with. It's not like you can go hire somebody to make some new PowerPoint presentations for you or, you know, so like day one, guess who's cold calling? It's me, right? We didn't have <laughs> your SDR. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so you got to be ready to wear a lot of hats because nobody's like, nobody's coming to your rescue, right? You're, you're in the lifeboat and however many guys and gals are in it with you, that's, that's the team. So figure out who can do what and how can you, um, you know, divide responsibilities so that everybody's doing um, the most towards the successful um, outcomes that you want. And what do you like most about sales now that you've kind of, you've been in it quite a while, it's your career? Yeah, I, I'd say still meeting new people. Um, I, I love going into a, uh, a conversation and just not knowing exactly what I'm going to get. You know, you can look somebody up on LinkedIn. You can read the latest press releases from their company. You can kind of get a, a some, maybe even look them up on social media um, if you have time. Uh, and all that research, I would say, really helps in advance. But um, at some point, you got to walk in and, you know, shake somebody's hand and, and make a good impression. And... Uh, that's a fun moment. You know, you're, you're the new kid in class at that point. And, and that was something that I enjoyed growing up and that still uh, kind of makes me, makes me hum uh, today. Yeah. Because this is kind of the first time I've talked to somebody where they, the desire to live abroad, you know, but it, it now comes back to that curiosity and interest in others. Yeah. I, I think it's really eye opening to, understand more perspectives than just your own and whether that's you know driving across the town driving across town for um a coffee with a customer going to a different city or even across the the whole planet to go you know yeah. sell a system on a new continent um all those things really um add facets to who you are and I, I think the more understanding, uh, this is a, apart from all sales stuff, the more understanding that, that one person can uh, have for other lifestyles, the, um, the more interesting and interested you'll be. Because it also gives you kind of insight into what you think they'll do and what they care about. Mm -hmm. And those, those elements that you brought into the ROI or the return on what process or- Performance. Yeah. Performance. Because mm -hmm. you're seeing yeah. the world through their eyes. Yeah, for sure. You, you can take in all these different perspectives and say, in the past, when I've had a customer who kind of said things like this, or who kind of responded to me in that way, um, you've got a little bit of a frame of reference. And um, it, it, I think it's so important to not just have like kind of a, a single path um, in terms of what you're able to do or who you're able to talk with. Yeah, cool. Right. Hey, it's been a fun conversation. Where can people go to connect with you? Yeah, so I've got a, uh, I've got a LinkedIn page, just like everybody. You can find me at uh, linkedin.com slash pswanson85. And then um, I'm also active on Instagram. Uh, you can see I'm wearing a tie-dye shirt today. I, I've, uh, for about the past year, done a series called Tie-Dye Fridays, where every Friday I wear a tie-dye shirt and I post a picture of myself wearing it. And uh, it's been a fun, it's been a really fun way to engage. So on Instagram, my handle is Gator Boots Gucci Suits. <laughs> but with, yeah, obviously. Cla a classic rap song lyric for those who know. Um, but it's uh, spelled with no vowels. So it's G-T-R-B-T-S-G-C-C-S-T-S. -C -C -S -S.